Sure. Yes, sir, 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 sir. Whenever. Great. So uh, I welcome everyone for this unique discussion of the biography of late Irfan Khan, a person uh, who will always stay in people's heart. All his roles that um, he has played were remarkable. And today at CBL, we are glad to have noted author Asim Chavraji and our guest of honor, Atul Tiwari, to discuss this book. Uh, let me introduce our guest for today's discussion. Uh, Atul Tiwari ji is a theater director, playwright by passion, film writer by profession, an actor accidentally, and a museum maker incidentally. <laughs> but he does a dozen other things to feel and look busy. Those who want to know more details can always Google Mr. Atul Tiwari. And let me tell you, <laughs> it was sent by him. This introduction is not by him. He only sent it to me. <laughs> That's Atul Tiwari ji. Because I said, who am I to write an introduction about him? <laughs> Same goes for uh, our dear author, Asim Chhabra ji. He's an author of biographies of Shashi Kapoor and Priyanka Chopra. And the recently released Rifan Khan, The Man, The Dreamer, The Star. A film journalist in New York City and New, York, New Delhi. He has been published in the New York Times, the Boston Global, the Philadelphia Inquirer, Mumbai Mirror, Rediff.com, The Hindu, BBC.com, Quartz, and the list is long. He's been a commentator of Indian cinema on NPR, CNN, BBC, CBC, ABCs, and Good Morning America. Asim is also the festival director of the New York Indian Festival, the largest and the oldest festival in North America. He's the voice of Shadow Puppet, number one in director Nina Pale's acclaimed animated film, Sita Sings the Blues. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Asim Chhabra ji and Atul Tiwari ji for this lovely discussion on Irfan Khan. Over to you, sir. Thank, thank you, you, Mohit. And uh, uh, thank you, City Book Leaders. And thank you, Rupa, for giving us this wonderful book and this chance for this conversation. Friends, uh, indomitable actor, late Irfan Khan, was four years uh, my junior at the National School of Drama. He was 15 years junior to Sir Nasruddin Shah Sahab and Om Puri Ji. The most beautiful gems produced by the National School of Drama. Yet, in many ways, he left all of his seniors behind and became senior to all of us in the world of cinema. In real life, friends, in film Makhul, Nasruddin Shah Sahab and Om Puri Ji used to write fate of Makhul that was played by Irfan Khan. But I think in real life to these two actors, Om Puri and Nasruddin Shah, wrote the destiny of Irfan Khan by making inroads into Indian cinema for unconventional, not chocolate looking actors who became heroes, and also making inroads into the West, including Hollywood. But the heights that Irfan climbed to were really dizzying. He did films with directors like Ang Lee, Danny Boyle, Mira Nair, Michael Winterbottom, Mark Webb, Ron Howard, and Steven Spielberg, to name just a few. Irfan was part of several films that were nominated for Oscars and was a part of two films that ended up winning Oscars. Recently, as uh, Mohit was telling us, in the month of January, Asim Chabra Sahab has written a wonderful book on Irfan. Uh, Asim Chabaraji, as uh, Mohit told in the introduction, is a commentator, a critique, and a chronicler of Indian cinema and Indian film personalities. So, welcome, Asim Ji. Thank you, Adhusa. Uh, Thank you. Good that you are in India and not in New York at the moment, because I know that you spent half the year in New York and uh, then a few months in, in Delhi, but you are in Delhi. Because in New York, the situation is not so good as you know, because of the COVID pandemic. And then New York has really becoming the become the epicenter of whatever is happening with Corona the world over. Asimji, before we come to your latest book and the subject of your book, actor Irfan Khan, I would like to talk to you briefly about your other two books, all brought by Rupa, if I'm right. Yes. Uh, your first book was Householder, 
the star on Shashi Kapoor ji. So how come I book on Shashi ji on 2016 when he was no more in his prime? Though for us in Bombay, especially the theatre people, he was always an inspiration. And uh, at Prithvi Theatre, we always looked up to meet him and see him and get inspired by him. So what inspired you to write a book so, so late in life? You know, yes. I, I've been a fan of Shashi Kapoor for as long as you can think of. I mean, you've one, once been a fan of other actors also. I mean, I, Amitabh Bachchan, Rajesh Khanna, but, you know, Shashi had something really unique, special. He was also so good looking. Um, I went to America in 1981 to study as a student. Uh, I did journalism there and stayed on. So since 81, and I remember in the early 80s, um, uh, 83, I would think, because Heat and Dust uh, was released in uh, 83. Uh, the Museum of Modern Art had a retrospective of all of Merchant Ivory films. And so I went to see all of the films. I may have seen, I think, either Shakespeare Wala, Householder on Doordarshan along before I left. But I watched them all, including a not so good film Shashi did with them called Bombay Talkies. So I was tracking and trying to understand Shashi's life and career outside of India while I was there. Uh, meanwhile, I was also talking to, I talked to Ismail Merchant, James Ivory many, many times. So this book on Shashi Kapoor in some ways was being written 25, 30 years before, uh, you know, before I even knew that I would become a journalist and writer and, and write books really. I'd collected so much material. Um, I have this book that um, Bimal Roy's uh, daughter wrote about him, Rinki Bhattacharya. It's a collection of essays in which there are two essays, uh, two pieces by Shashi Kapoor about his experiences working with Bimal Roy. So when the time came, when I was approached to write a book, um, and my Rupa, uh, the, 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 there was an editor I was working with there, she's no longer with Rupa. And they came up with several suggestions and I kept saying, no, 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 you know, everything was not exciting me. Until I myself thought, I said, let me think about who I should write. There's been no book on Shashi Kapoor. And I felt the time was right. He was already unwell. I didn't know how, how seriously unwell he was till I, I, I went to interview Sanjana actually. Um, you know, I, there were two books written on Rajesh Khanna after he passed away and I didn't want that to happen. Um, and uh, so I thought the time was absolutely right. Now, Shashi himself was quite against people writing books about him for the longest time. And so when Madhu Jain had actually approached him uh, about 10 plus years ago, uh, maybe more. She wanted to write a book on him. So she kept saying, nay, nay, nay. Uh, and then finally she wrote a book on the Kapoors in which there's a chapter on, on Shashi also. Um, mm. Actually, it was a very useful chapter for my, my book also. Mm. I, I, I felt it was time to celebrate Shashi. The other thing that was, 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 was interesting to me was, you know, Shashi and Amitabh, even though Shashi was senior to Amitabh, they became contemporaries and they, were, they started, mm. there were several films they acted in together. And, um, but because of Shashi's illness and because he had gained all this weight and, you know, he had all these tragic drinking problems and everything else, um, his last film was like in 1998. He, a couple of films were released around that time. And he did nothing after that. I mean, except for the fact that the, uh, uh, the Prithvi Theatre was being run by him. Amitabh continued. Amitabh even continues now. And Amitabh has done everything from cement advertising to every film. And so I thought even today's generation of kids who are 10, 12, 15 years old, um, they all know who Amitabh is. When I told my niece and nephew that I was going to write a book uh, on Shashi Kapoor, they first said, who's Shakti Kapoor? <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> then I said, he was Rishi Kapoor's uncle. Wo bhi unko kuch didn't affect them. Then I said, he's R Ranbir's grand uncle. So they said, ah, okay, theek hai, theek hai, kind of a thing. But I realized that people have completely forgotten Shashi Kapoor. Or they remembered him only because of Diwar. You know, Mere Paas Maa hai, that scene. Yes, yes, yes. That's what, and in, in India, there was no trend of writing books. I mean, you know, um, um, a definitive book on Dilip Kumar has come only about five, six years ago, not before that. Now, Dilip Saab is in his 90s. So it's when, when he's touching 90s, then an authoritative book comes on Dilip Kumar Saab. So now there is this trend is picking up and there are no more books now on people um, who should have been um, touched upon by the authors like you much before. Um, and uh, similarly, I mean, uh, what about uh, your second book, which is even more surprising, The Incredible Story of a Global Bollywood Star, the book on Priyanka Chopra. You yourself, your first sentence in the book, Asim, is 
Does Priyanka Chopra deserve a book? Now, please explain it to our audiences today. Well, what happened was, so after I had done the Shashi Kapoor book, um, in fact, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think I signed a contract for Priyanka while I was, the Shashi book was being edited or something. Um, again, several names were suggested to me to write another biography. And I was keen to write another book. And I won't mention, tell you who the other names were, but I just kept saying, no, 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 there's no way I could write on all of them. <coughs> um, when they mentioned Priyanka also, I said first, no. And then I thought about it that because actually, I mean, I'd sort of been tracking Priyanka's career, not her early part of her career, I had to go see those films, for the, but latter part of her career. And when, when she initially started her music career in America and up to the point of Quantico, um, I had interviewed uh, her a couple of times. I had interviewed uh, her manager who was strategizing her entire career in America, making her into a star in a country where nobody knew her. So I had already done a lot of work and research on that. And I, I thought, you know, that's a story that hasn't been discussed in, the, in, in, in depth in India. And because the book was first initially going to be published in India. So I, it, to me, it was again because of the fact that I've been living in America for so long, which is what happened with Shashi's book also, that because Priyanka had a part of her life in America, her current life, and also she'd also gone to America as a teenager when she was you know, 13 or something like that. She studied yes. in three schools there, uh, lived with her aunt and her cousins. Um, I felt that I could tell a, a story that had not been sort of narrated in India as such. And so I said, okay, I'll do it. Although it was quite a challenge. I mean, you know, I, I, I had to see many of her early films, etc., which were really very bad. But, um, you know, that's a part of the work. Great. And now I seems up to your third book, the focus of our today's conversation. Your book is called The Man, The Dreamer, The Star, Irfan Khan. Your book starts with an unexpected phone call which you got when you were on one of the streets of New York one day. What happened that day? Well, um, I used to have a full-time, I, I had full-time jobs. I used to work in management capacity with magazines. So I was going to my, uh, my job. It was around 8.30 in the morning. I had left home and I lived um, half a block from the subway station, which is the best way to describe it. It's like about four minutes, five minutes walk. So I was walking and my phone rang. Uh, I think I had one of those flip phones at that time. It was, I think, 2006. Mm. Ki baat hai. Mm. And I saw there was an India number because it said plus nine one. Mm. I didn't recognize the number, but immediately when the call would come from India, I would take it because my parents were old and I was like, oh, this could be a serious matter or something. I'm walking on the street and a man comes on the phone and in the voice says, um, hello, in English, he said, can I speak to um, Asim Chabra? And I said, yeah, this is Asim Chabra speaking. And he said, sir, my Irfan Khan bowl wrong. Mm. And I, you know, I had interviewed many famous filmmakers, directors, uh, actors, um, Hollywood personalities, European filmmakers, Bollywood or not. But I got to tell you, I just, I was like, what? Irfan Khan is calling me. How does he even get my number? <laughs> but what had happened was, uh, this was toward yes. the end of, uh, maybe toward the end of September 2006 or maybe October 2006. In early September, the first weekend of September 2006, I used to go every year to a film festival in, in Colorado in a town called Telluride. And Namesake had, had, had its world premiere there. And Mira was the only person who came for the premiere. Mm. And I then did, I used to write a weekly column for Mumbai Mirror, but Mumbai Mirror at that time used to have a magazine also, a Sunday magazine called Buzz. So they asked me to do a long profile of Mira, but the peg was this uh, Namesake. So I you know, interviewed Meera for about an hour or so. I had known her a long time, known her work. And I wrote about it. Irfan read the article and somehow got my number. I'm not sure how he got my number. And he said, he said, sir, I haven't seen the film. How did you feel? So I said to him, sir, I really like it. You have to roll it. Yes, yes, yes. The truth is that your New York connection is still there. कुछ चाहे शशि कपूर साहब का जो ट्रायो जिसने शशि कपूर को एक सीरियस स्टार बनाया वेस्ट में जिसमें मर्चेंट आइवरी एंड रूट प्रावर जावाला तीनों का नाम शामिल है और फिर प्रियंका का जो पूरा न्यूयॉर्क कनेक्शन रहा है उनका क्वींस में रहना और ये मीरा नायर का जो 
ये और कनेक्शन रहा है और किस तरह से आप उससे जुड़ते चले गए और ये तीनों किताबें आपकी एक तरह से कहें कि न्यूयॉर्क कनेक्शन वाले लोगों के बारे में ही है आपका बड़ा कमाल का चैप्टर शुरू होता है एक ऐसा किरदार जिसकी आंखें अफसाना कहती हैं इरफान की आंखों के बारे में और इवन टॉम हैंग से और आप भी अपने एक मैन क्रश की बात करते हैं इरफान से रिसर्च he spent so much time with jumba lahri's father hmm. trying to understand what a, what a middle aged bengali man is like what a middle aged bengali man living in america sounds like hmm. um and you know as it is the story of namesake the novel had really impacted me you know i'm an, i'm a, i was also an immigrant i'm still i'm an immigrant i would say i also had a son, i have a son um there is all of that um but but the pain that irfan shows in that film when he tries to communicate with his son correct and to tell his son about what that book meant to him and why they named why he named his son gogol um and the son just brushes it aside it's not it's only after he dies well there's a deep conversation between the father and son before that also um that moved me so much and it moves me i've seen the film like 5 6 7 times i don't know how many times i've seen it really um it's it's but it's irfan that you know it's the same when when i see lunchbox the lunchbox in fact i saw it the night he died um and i watched it again and seen it again many times um he really really used to bring especially the tragedy of the pathos of his characters but then on the other hand when you know we, we when you you quoted me saying that he was one of the sexiest actors i love him in piku yes so i think it's a very clever smart comedy but not a laugh out loud comedy and irfan is very very romantic um and 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 a very down to earth kind of romance that we we all can understand this not the sharuk khan kind of spreading your arms and you know just the look he gives to uh, deepika um that's right that's right and sexy too <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> As in you have given a wonderful account of um, Irfan's uh, formative years in Tonk, Jaipur, and then at what you call the mecca of Indian theatre, National School of Drama. Uh, well, do you think it's just coincidental that many great actors, including Nasiruddin Shah Saab and Om Puri, like Irfan, have all come from National School of Drama? Well, you should be able to uh, actually answer that better <laughs> because you were you were trained in National School of Drama, and you know. You, you yes. had a whole career in theater and and films uh, i think there's a certain kind of training the national school of drama gives from the early stage when al qazi saab was the, the the director and over the years many other directors have come um and it's also true that many of the most of the people, students who join national school of drama even until you know the, the recent years you know they all eventually want to get into films um at the time in irfan uh, tried for national school of drama actually the, the the pune film and television institute actually was not offering acting courses yeah yeah so the only option for irfan was to go to national school of drama and also because nasir and ompuri had gone there um it's something about the training that you that you guys all received there which is so yeah the kind of rigor the kind of rigor which goes into the training for 3 years the kind of teachers we have had and for generations it's not one generation i mean yeah. if a film like um, uh, 
in which uh, three generations of people, including Surekha Sikri ji, yes. Nina Gupta, and uh, Gajaraj Singh get uh, mentions and national awards, yeah. then you know that something has been right with the institute. Yeah. Like, but actually you also have had um, uh, association with school of drama one degree removed that you studied at the modern school which is very close to the national school of drama at mandi house and one of your teachers was om shupuri ji right came from the formative years of national school of drama and from the formative years of modern new indian theater and sudha shipuri also and Sudarsh Shupuri ji. And Ramakumar Bajaj also. They all started in our school. <laughs> Bajaj sahab used to teach in the junior classes. And yeah. I think Om Shupuri ji was teaching yeah. you at the senior classes at yeah. the same time. So this has been a great association in your life also. And, the and, students, and, and also many, many, many of the graduates from modern school are from Anuradha Kapoor, whose, whose father was our principal to... Yes, um, Mr. Alok Kapoor sahab. Yes. Uh, you know, they all were from modern school. So there, there's been this connection. Yeah, and since we're talking about so many people, including Ram Gopal Bajaj Sahab's name you took. So what did Fan did with the teachers like Ram Gopal Bajaj Sahab, Barry John and Prasanna was, I think, prepared, was a great bedrock for him to, to get launched into the world of acting that he was getting into. And um, especially with Prasanna, I, I think uh, it was not just about the craft of acting. Prasanna was somewhere was also like a moral compass to Irfan because in his illness also, Irfan has gone to Bangalore and to the village of uh, Prasanna mm. works in the villages mm. and where Prasanna was on a fast until death for getting rights to the handicrafts men and women of the villages and, and Irfan makes, despite his illness, a trip to meet Prasanna. So that's why I said some, somewhere in Prasanna also he had a kind of a yeah. moral compass where he was. Yes, please. One of, one of my regrets really, um, yeah. as, as, you, as I mentioned in the beginning of the book and we can probably discuss a little later, I did have a brief conversation with Irfan when he was in London getting his treatment and he gave me names of some people to talk to including your friend, uh, colleague Varun Gautam. But Irfan also gave me Prasanna's phone number to talk to him. and. Yes. Unfortunately, I was in Delhi. I didn't have the time and bandwidth to travel all the way to the south to meet up with Prasanna. We tried to talk on the phone and the, the connection never was good. So I was not able to interview Prasanna for the book. Basically. Yeah, because Prasanna seriously lives in the very, very deep villages where it's uh, where sometimes there is no network and things like that. It's yeah. very <laughs> difficult to get. Yeah, the, the connection kept getting so, cut off and it just became impossible then after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, Azim, sir, um, I mean, it was such a great coincidence that Irfan started his acting career with a great like Meera Nair in Salam Bombay. Even if a small role, but Meera did promise her that you will one day do big roles with me and then she kept her promise. And uh, then he, like many others of the National School of Drama, the joke is that the day you pass out, you everybody, half the bogey is booked for the National School of Drama people to go to Bombay. And Irfan also went to Bombay and like most of us, he had to work in the buffer called uh, television. But in television also, it's it's wonderful that, that a man who started with Meera Nair in the films, he get to work with greats like Sham Benegal and, uh, and um, uh, Nilani Saab, Govind Nilani Ji in, yeah. in, in the theatre plays. I'm sure you must have seen those plays. I saw later the little Zizu uh, uh, yeah. when I, before I went to interview Govind Nelani. Yeah. Little Leolf and uh, Leolf, yeah. the father. Leolf, not little Zizu, Little Leolf. Yeah. <laughs> little Leolf. Uh, right. Right. Um, little Zizu was Sony Tarapurwala. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> it's, 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 it's wonderful. And then, then the film with um, Govindji, Drishti. Yeah, yeah. So I have a very interesting, so you see, I had seen Drishti um, on a VHS tape um, in 1990s. I was in New York at that time. You know, we used to get pirated tapes. So I, I remember the film very well, except for I didn't know who Irfan was in any case at that time. And I remembered him to have this very curly hair. So I used to think that Zakir Hussain was acting in that role. <laughs> Weird thing. When I started researching this book, and you know, and then I went to interview Govind Elani, and I suddenly realized, my God, that was Irfan Khan also. You know, I saw the film again. <laughs> I, you know, you know, when you don't know the actor, everybody knew Dimple Kapadia that time. Everybody knew. Yeah, 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 yeah. You forget the supporting actors sometimes. Yeah. 
we all used to be very jealous that Irfan had gone a scene with it, uh, an intimate scene on the top of that with Dimple Kapadia, yes. the, <laughs> the goddess, the diva in those days. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, so, uh, his other TV work, which, which mainly was to sustain him in the city of Mumbai, to be afloat so that one day you can swim in the direction that you want to, was also very interesting at times. You, you talk about the, the thrillers and the bestsellers. And um, I was very fortunate to have uh, written for a couple of them, including one thing called Saab Sidi, mm. which was directed by a wonderful television and film director, Suhel Tatari. Mm -hmm. And um, in which, which, which he played a man who used to keep a snake at home to, to take badla with the people and all that. I also got to work with Irfan um, in a series called Mano Ya Na Mano, Achha. which was uh, which was about some unexplained phenomena, and we tried to do some scientific um, research and some psychological research and some focus focus whatever came our way. Yeah. And um, then at one point in time, I I was about to leave the show when too much of focus focus was told by the channel to be included, but Irfan insisted. And he said that otherwise, if you leave, I'll also leave. And then I continued on that show, Manu and Naman, all thanks to Irfan. And, and none, none of the actors and stars do it, but he insisted that I do, and, and I continued writing it. And then comes the serious first big bridge, The Warrior, Asif Kapadia's film. Irfan himself says that my life changed after that, talking about The Warrior. The warrior was not very well received here or whatever happened, you know, with uh, its release in America and all that. But still, I mean, he was noticed in America and uh, uh, including San Francisco Chronicle writing that the actor Khan is a rugged man with sad eyes. Again, the eyes come into the focus. <laughs> Tell us something about your assessment of the warrior. And I, I think that that film is absolutely brilliant, and I I really hope there's some way people can watch it because it's not streaming anywhere. I I have a I have a DVD of the film lying in my storage space in New York, and that's I'd seen it of course, and I think you know, and it was the release was delayed. It was released in two thousand and five, by which time I had already seen Irfan in Makul. Um, it's a very very powerful story without. Uh, it's a very quiet, silent film. Um, it has a Western, sort of the old Western qualities. Um, and what, I, what I'm really impressed with is that now that I've, I, I started researching for the, for the book and watched the film again, that Asir Kapadia, that was the first film he made, um, really honed on Irfan's eyes. The opening shot of the film is, in the credits are rolling, is this, this focus just on this man's eyes. And yes, I was like, wow. Yes. Irfan was in his early 30s or something at that time. Um, and it's about, you know, it's about forgiveness. It's about, uh, it's about redemption. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of violence. It's beautifully shot. Um, very, very, very powerful and sort of a haunting uh, uh, quality. And Irfan sort of being the lead character, he just carries the, you know, of course, the film. Um, and he was so young. He hadn't done something like this before. Um, one of the things that Irfan later spoke about was that he realized once he started working on uh, Warrior, why, while he was so unhappy doing television, was in television he would be made to do the same thing again and again and again. With Warrior, for a few months, he stayed with the character and he felt the development of the character, the arc, you know, and, and he sort of was breathing the character, really. It, it gave him a chance really to, um, to really look within himself to see what kind of an actor he could be. And Warrior gave him that opportunity. Definitely. And Warrior comes in 2001. And with yeah. this, please allow me to say that the last 20 years have been uh, in Indian cinema, the century of Irfan Khan. This has been uh, these years of Irfan Khan. And, uh, and after Warriors comes Hasil and Bakul, these two mm -hmm. Indian films, which again will establish him and Hasil with his old friend from National School of Drama, Tegman Shudhulia. Mm -hmm. like a tissue and uh, Magbul with uh, Mishal Bharadwaj sahab, his lifelong muse, I would say. Mm -hmm. These two films are again going to kind of establish Irfan in the firmament of Indian cinema, mm -hmm. um, like no other actor had done before him, but for two of his seniors, Omji mm -hmm. and Rasifai. Mm -hmm. 
so i think i think and and then two shots one again is a by product of warrior i would say that is amit kumar's bypass because amit yeah. kumar was working with asim kapadia yeah. yes. and wrote to ladakh with shashwin kumar which is shashwin kumar yes yes who wrote to ladakh Jacob. by the way streaming on um, on amazon prime so people should see it yes it's yes. a very interesting documentary i think that's better than the film also is called the the unmaking of road to ladakh uh, it's 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 on net yeah the kind of difficulties which they had yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. shooting a film um, but yes and with road to ladakh actually uh, they then went uh, uh, ashwin went to the uh, khan's market to try and sell the film and irfan tagged along and irfan said to him that you know in a few years i'll be back and i'll be walking the red carpet and it happened um in i think 2007 he was in 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 um, uh a mighty heart you know the, the michael winterbottom yes. film along with angelina jolie and brad pitt yes um, yes 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 so yeah um wonderful and i think these two films hasil and makbool seriously established him in the indian cinema and, and he had all the eyeballs Uh, watching his wonderful eyes and what he could do what his potential was and then immediately was picked up by the bhat yes uh, household uh, for his first commercial commercial rogue oh, yes. <laughs> what a different kind of a film than the magbul or hasil were yeah or or rest of his work in this century was yeah uh, i i also find somewhere um, though this film again has not been seen much or talked about much na hota yu to kya hota i find it very important in irfan's career because that's a film directed by nasiruddin shah sahab mm. mm. who he looked up to he mm. nasiruddin shah was his idol for a long time people used to tell him at the school stop copying nasiruddin shah so <laughs> nasiruddin shah was his idol and if his idol finds him good enough to cast him in his film and cast yeah. him his first film so that tells a lot about that where it fun had arrived right and uh, i'm sure that uh, uh, that nasiruddin shah could not have tolerated somebody playing nasiruddin shah yeah he would have uh, bashed him to bits so he had uh, nasir sahab had seen that this guy had found his own moorings and that's right. why he took him in his films nasir and then of course i you know i um over the years i interviewed so many people so the entire coterie of actors around sham benegal's group uh, you know shabana and om puri and everybody but i had never interviewed nasiruddin shah and so i got uh-huh. his phone number and it was a blind text message i sent to nasiruddin shah saying that i'm writing this book on irfan and he wrote back to me saying asim um irfan's a good friend and he's a wonderful actor i would love to talk to uh, you about him it was just Lovely. so generous of him really yes yes and yes. because when i went to interview they were rehearsing a play um in this uh, the chavan auditorium basement mein kahin pe tha yes and ratna was also there. in fact it was a play ratna patak shah she was directing it so over lunch i was able to talk to both of them because she had done a lot of films with him also irfan yeah yes uh, ratna had done this first play also with uh, with govind ilani ji with in yes. which he was yes. there and all that so so yes. ratna was the one who introduced seriously irfan to nasir bhai and and uh, and then of course in the same year comes namesake Yes. which will change everything in the us for him and 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 he'll become a permanent feature in many of the us films uh moving ahead in 2007 and 8 he works with some of the most wonderful beautiful first ladies of hollywood whether it was angelina jolie whether it was natalia portman um two of them in 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 new york i love you with mira nair in a shot and of Talk course mighty yeah. heart yeah mighty heart a film that i seriously love because uh, the way it touches your heart uh, leading to the last scene where you know what happens to danny pearl to yeah. danny pearl in the film and the way the film is constructed and the way irfan plays the captain saab is is again um, a wonderful work what what's what's your take on I, I think it's a, it's a fantastic. You know, you know, Michael Winterbottom has a very strange way of working. You know, he never writes a script, and so th- there's no script given to the the characters. Um, and, and 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 I'm not sure if the night before or the, the, that morning itself, they know what the plot line is. In this case, a mighty heart. There was a book, of course, that everybody could have read because 
uh, Danny Pearl's widow, Marion Pearl, had written yeah, the book. Yeah, book. yeah. Uh, you know, some actors would find that to be very, very challenging and very, very difficult. I think this, uh, I, I, I read a few interviews where Irfan talked about how freeing it was for him as an actor. Mm -hmm. That he knew what his character was supposed to do in every shot. Mm -hmm. But when they improvised in the dialogue, the last minute sort of preparing the dialogues with the actors together, uh, co-actors and the director, it's a, it's a great sense. And you know, ultimately what you get is a very, very powerful uh, it's a thriller. Uh, it's done in a thriller style because Danny Pearl is kidnapped. In oh, the yes, yes, yes. Uh, September 11th and most of the scenes were actually shot. The, you know, the film was shot in Pune and in yeah. Bombay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they couldn't, of course, take, go to Pakistan to shoot it. Um, yes. So it's a thriller. It's also a real tragic story about this woman who's desperately looking for her husband and she's pregnant. Husband. And you have this cop, the captain, the mysterious uh, role that Irfan plays, who is who becomes like a solid uh, sort of a backbone support for Marion Pearl and her friend Asra Nomani. Um, and Irfan plays it very well. I mean, there are scenes where he's very tender, he's very gentle, he's very, you know, caring. And then there are other scenes where he just explodes. And, you know, when he screams and yells, some other scenes. And, you know, only an actor like Irfan could have done that, where he could get, you, you get into, again, as I said, you get into the soul of a police officer, um, where, uh, and, and the director gives you that opportunity to, you know, explore that whole range of emotions of the character. Wonderful. The same time in India, we get to see a life in Metro. Yes. Where again, you see a different kind of contours, different shades of Irfan. And uh, uh, I think this is the first time when you see him in the lighter vein as well, and not just as the intense, yeah, and the romantic actor, role, the, yeah. the, the 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 romantic role that, right. that that we did not, many people did not know that they could exist there. Of course, there have been other things like in Drishti and, and other films, but nevertheless, well, but also there was romance, but it was a very dangerous. Yeah, romance. yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. And then. Uh, comes the film, which changed history for India in many ways, and of course for Irfan in many ways, Slumdog Millionaire, 2008, Danny Boyle. And um, Danny Boyle was, uh, so says about Irfan that he's quintessentially an Indian, and yet something else besides. He's a touchstone connecting the two worlds. And also this made Irfan first time walk the red carpet at the Oscars and the mm -hmm. film went on to win eight Oscars. Uh, this seriously was a, a, a film which, which changed many things for Indian cinema, our ambitions, our actors, that something could be done in India and yet it could touch the world. It could uh, mean something to the markets as well as to the Academy and the voters of the Academy Awards. Mm -hmm. Tell you know, me about. Many, um, sorry for cutting you, but there are many people in India who didn't like the film. Oh yes, uh, uh, they thought it was sort of represented this poverty of India, and it was just hmm. catching on that kind of a thing. I think it's a very well-made film. I think it's a very well-crafted film. The editing and and and, and the characters uh, and it's, it's very entertaining in a lot of ways, gripping. Um, but yes, that film not only uh, Irfan, but the four main character actors in it, including Anil Kapoor and Dev Patel, it, it completely changed their lives. Um, Irfan was able to get an agent finally in Hollywood that opened more doors for him. Uh, and in Indian cinema also, people began to, not, not that every Hollywood film was coming to India to shoot, but they were able to say like, okay, wow, you can make this kind of a fascinating films for, at a rather low budget though. I mean, the, the, that film didn't cost that much of money to make. It, you know, earned a lot of money in the box office. Yes, yes, yes. That's right, that's right. And then moving ahead, uh, we come to this juncture where uh, three very important films come in India. Yes, Ali Zindagi with Sudhir Mishra, who has been a longtime friend of Irfan and also a neighbor uh, of Irfan Khan and Shutapa and their kids. Saat Kun Maaf with Vishal again and um, one of other heroines of, of Asim Chabra, which is Priyanka Chopra. And uh, of course, Pan Singh Tomar. I think the most iconic defining film for Irfan Khan, again with his old friend Tishu. Um, it also got him his first national award. 
and the Padma Shri in the same year, so that it really became a <clears throat> wonderful year for Irfan. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, mean, I, I remember one conversation I has had with Mr. Raj Babbar. I'd written a film for him, which released in 2000, 2001, called Shahid Udham Singh. Mm. When he saw the film, which also was very popular, both in US and Canada, he, he said that, Atul, you have given me a film, which I would like to be shown when I die. And I think if there is one film which defines this actor, which he carries only on his shoulders, that is Pan Singh. Pan Singh Tohar. Tohar. What's yeah. your, your take on this? No, no, you're absolutely right. And, 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 and the fact that he had to, by, by the time Pan Singh Tomar is made, I think it's 2012 or 2013 was released. Um, Irfan was in his 40s and he had to, and he wanted to do all the sort of the sport, sports and stunt scenes. He had to act like a 20 year old, you know, a, a sportsman, for instance, he learned steeplechase and, and long distance running and all of those things, the, 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 the skills. Um, and you're absolutely right, he carries the film. Um, it, it's a very, very tragic story. Um, and somebody like Irfan can really carry it because he can be very earthy, very rural. Um, and, 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 and you really feel there is injustice being done to him. And he tries his best and then the, uh, the, the change that happens and he becomes a decoyite. I'm not, I'm sure most people have seen the film. Um, great, powerful performance. Um, you know, Nawazuddin Siddiqui has a small role in the film. He was just about becoming more and more famous in films. Um, but yeah, I mean, Tikmanshu Dulia really, I mean, you know, Hassel was good. I mean, and, and they also did another film, I think after uh, Pansi Tomar, the Sai BBO. Uh, yes, Gangster. Gangster Returns. <laughs> but I don't think that was as strong as some, you know, Pansi yes. Tomar. And again, again, all these films, there were other shoulders also carrying the film. If you talk about Sahabibi and Gangster Returns and other films, there were other people also yes, yes. who were carrying the films here. Pan Singh Tumar is entirely yeah. held and carried by yes. Yes. Irfan. So, so that makes it a great difference. In the West too, that this was a wonderful time for him with Life of Pi, Ang Lee. Um, who believed that Irfan should have been nominated that year for the Academy Awards, Amazing Spider-Man, and in Treatment, this, this wonderful series about people. Which, by the way, is day. now streaming on uh, Disney Plus. Uh, yes. Yes, so yes. How many yes, people yes. have seen in Treatment? Yes, 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 uh, yes. They should watch it for Irfan's performance, really. <clears throat> um, definitely, definitely, definitely. And, and then I think he becomes the only Indian actor who becomes part of these uh, franchises, whether it was the amazing Spider-Man, whether it was the Jurassic series and um, one more, which I can't remember at the moment, but the, oh, the, 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 the one, the, uh, the Dan Brown series, he was in uh, Inferno. Inferno. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The, Inferno uh, yeah. with, with Tom Hanks. Yes, yes. With, but again, so th that again is a wonderful thing. Uh, 2013's brings out D-Day again, a wonderful performance by him. Very different kind of a performance by him. And Lunchbox. Amazingly beautiful film that ultimately took him and established him in, 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 in the Cannes Film Festival. But unfortunately, was not nominated for the Oscars by India and uh, the Indian committee, which, which is supposed to nominate, which sometimes ends up nominating very, very strange kind of films. So, but Lunchbox, again, has been a very defining film in his career. And again, brings, I think, the, the second time both Nawazuddin Siddiqui and him, after Bypass at least, right. together. One of the very interesting things that uh, Ritesh Patra, director of uh, Lunchbox, who I'd known for a while because he also lives uh, most of the time in, in New York. Uh, one of the things that Ritesh said to me was that the story was not about an old man. Hmm. The story about a man who believes he's old. Who believes he's old, yes. And, you know, because he's a, he's a widower and he's on the verge of retirement. Retirement is the age of 60. That's not old, I tell you myself, myself. But he believes he's old and he suddenly gets this, this second wind of life, really, when he starts to receive this letters through this lunchbox. And then he, you know, and there's this very cute moment where he's sitting with, um, with Nawaz and Nawaz's girlfriend on the floor and he's eating in the house and he says, Mary girlfriend, egg. <laughs> uh, and he's not better. 
he never met, met he, he never meets her yeah. even when he gets a chance he yes yeah. away and and, and, yeah. and they, they never meet next comes this this bundle of piku talwar and of course jurassic world the sixth biggest grosser of all times in cinema yeah. so that also kind of uh, catapults irfan into another kind of a league uh, which which no other indian actor had gone to 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 such a league where, where he plays the main villain in a way the, the mm-hmm. man who owns this park runs this park the sindhi gentleman and who brings upon this whole tragedy to the park and the world that also puts him in another league like piku put him in another kind of a league with yeah. subtle humor right romantic but nothing overstated of course there are some flashes of anger at times at the frustration which he is feeling with these two you strange know, the was, um, jurassic world also gave him a chance for the first time to wear this very slick suit for instance i mean he <laughs> walks um, he's just and, this very very cool rich guy the cars he drives and he's flying a helicopter dies in the end when one of those sort of in flying things. helicopters and things yes yeah, yes yeah. helicopter but um it was a new he dies in a car crash but yeah it was a new opportunity for irfan to really hmm. uh you know be flashy which correct 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 hindi films would never give him that kind of a role in any case you know i love talwar also oh, i talwar. love talwar for so many performances not just irfan but also uh, with neeraj kabi and uh, with Oh, and also and the, cast, the supporting cast really yes uh, supporting cast was wonderful rajra and yeah yeah talwar yes. talwar the greatest strength of talwar is vishal bhadwaj's script yes it uh, is and then you know they kind of did a wonderful job directing it but it it found us fantastic in it yes again you know this side you see the vulnerable side to him one one moment when he's so broken down and he goes to his ex wife's house Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abu plays a supporting role, and he breaks down that night, and she's massaging his head, which is, I think, such a beautiful, tender scene. The fact that they had just gone through a very bad divorce. Um, there's something very sweet about that moment. Um, the Irfan does it very well. Then he goes on to turn a producer uh, with Madari, uh, Madari and Kari uh, Kari Singh. These these two films, and uh, Madari especially was liked by many people. i can't say the same for kari kripp singh but madari his performance also his performance was very good madari and, and in his performance and and the fact that he um, like shashi kapoor was ready to put his money where the mouth yeah was yeah so otherwise people don't do it it was only shashi kapoor saab about whom you write that how he, as a producer he kind of put his money and of course which uh, made him bankrupt at the end but he wanted to make a kind of a cinema and nobody else will come and do it unless until you do it and shri kapoor saab did it mm-hmm. so in the same way irfan also was trying to put his money and and his energy and his time into these kind of projects which he wanted to make and kareep actually kareep sorry kareep kareep singh actually did quite well in the box office i mean madari didn't do that well but yeah. uh, yeah. uh, You know that the comic period of Irfan was just starting. I mean, yes, it yes. came around the same time also. Yes, uh, it was Irfan's biggest hit. And then, of course, that the same comic streak continues in Hindi medium, <laughs> which, yeah. which uh, I mean, it's such such a beautiful film, such a lovely performance, and um, where uh, the director put him in this lenga and this chunni and all that, and you write about that. <laughs> that and he didn't want to do it. he didn't want to do it but yes. resisted because he's like you know you know he thought he's being put made to do the drag thing but mm. then when he did it mm. he really put his absolute heart and soul into that or the scene where toward the beginning when the family moves to this big flat in south delhi or some place and right. he starts to dance to that uh, sukhveer song ho 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 yeah 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 he yeah. doesn't want to dance because he used to hate dancing and then the director had to this is like it convinced him that if you're a punjabi in delhi mm. you have to be dancing to a song like that at a party Yes, <laughs> your, your Punjabi, you know, your your Punjabi card basically will be cancelled. And then we come to 2018, the puzzle, and life's biggest puzzle when Irfan wrote one day at 4:30 a.m. at night. For last 15 days, my life has been a suspense story. Little had I known that my search for rare stories. 
would make me find a rare disease. Irfan had been diagnosed with uh, neuroendocrine tumor by this time, but still was a warrior who had obligation to give us what we expect. Mm -hmm. uh, did you meet him in this time? Could you talk to him in this time? I talked to him once. Um, so what happened was I, by the time I was asked to write this book and earlier it had been offered to another somebody else. And so by the time the, the contract was transferred to me, this is early 2018. You know, you have to go and sign the contract and everything. And by the time all of that was done, he had just announced in March hmm. that he was unwell. And, you know, so it's not like, you know, some people might think that I decided to cash in on Irfan's illness, basically, but that was not my intention. I, when, when if the, the Irfan book was offered to me, I immediately jumped at it because, of the, you know, the Priyanka book, I took some time and I said no to several books, but I immediately jumped at Irfan book, but I think he was the greatest we had, you know, he was the greatest at that point. And I was so excited because that meant that I would be able to explore his work and watch his films again and talk to people and all of that of course happened. I wrote to Manpreet, his, uh, who was his manager at that time. She now works with Vishal Bhardwaj. And I said, listen, I'm, I've signed this contract and I'd already, I think interviewed uh, Meghna Gulzar and uh, Tigmanchu. Both had mm, immediately mm. given me interview. So she said, look, this is the thing in the past, Irfan has always been dead against um, books on him, whether biographies or autobiographies but he's going through a very different stage in his life and he might be, you know, open to the idea. So send him an email. So I sent a long email, although I had his email address, but I sent it to, uh, through uh, Manpreet. And she said to me um, that he'll, um, he'll, he'll call you, give you a phone number. And, and uh, so I got a little concerned at that point that you know, he had cancer. I didn't realize how serious his condition was, uh, you know, like um, then one, afternoon, I got a message, uh, WhatsApp message from Irfan saying, it seems a good time to talk. And I, I wrote back saying yes. Um, and then we talked for, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes or something like that. And he said to me again, the same thing. He said, Mujhe, malo ye kitab kya likh rahe those were his words. And sara email mein likha tha maine, ki kya likha hoga, and people who I, I have already interviewed and people I plan to interview. So I repeated that again. And I said, ke, I just want to celebrate you. And I want to celebrate your work and your cinema and you as an actor. Uh, and I think it's very important that your fans should be able to have that opportunity to uh, to know more about you beyond just watching the films. He seemed very open to it. You know, the fact that he gave me a couple of phone numbers. I mean, I would have never known who Varun Gautam was if he had not given me Varun Gautam's phone number. Um, yes. I would have not known. He, he said to me, he actually mentioned some, some articles I should read. Yes. Uh, up post had done some interviews with him. He said, Bo padhiye, wo bahut achhe hain. He said, Shekhar Kapoor se baat kariye, main jaan jata hoon, wo kya samajhte hain mere baare mein. <laughs> he said, uh, <laughs> although I was yes. not able to, you know, like how many people can you interview? He had done this really fun, funky video with oh, his EIP, wonderful, that wonderful. India Bhakcho. Yeah, just another Bollywood song, which is on YouTube. Everyone should watch it. He said, unse poochho, because he apparently had a great time working with them. And, and that I seem sorry to interrupt, that also posits Irfan in a very interesting way that though he is inside the film industry, but yet he is an outsider. Yeah. That's why he can make fun of what this film yeah. industry does yeah. to which he belongs. So that's, that's, a, that's a wonderful song and everybody should watch it. Yes. So I was lucky I was able to, um, you know, uh, Vasan Bala had directed the, that, that video and I've known Vasan for a very long time. So. But I also spoke to Tanmay Bhatt uh, mm -hmm. just for the time before the book was going to get published. So, you know, you get a taste of what it was like for them for a few days to hang out with Irfan and, um, you know, do this completely different style of work for him, with, you know, with him. So, yeah. So, but then I asked him, I said, I would like to interview you also. And he said, I'm not in the right place right now. So I didn't push. I said, you know, yes, yes. Yes. Okay, but then a coffee bari. We exchanged some WhatsApp messages and he wrote back to me a few times. Uh, but but when, by the time he came back to India in late 2018, early 2019, he didn't have a answer to me. He But I, I now understand that he was not keeping well and he did because he'd agreed to do Angrezi Medium. He shot that film, but I just couldn't get into it. No, I'm, I'm amazed. Where did he get the energy from to do this film in such a situation? 
mental also, and physical. One, yeah, in, there's one interview, uh, this, this English uh, medium. Wonderful young uh, journalist, Ankur Patak, interviewed him for Half Post. Yeah. India. And apparently, like every, and then other people have also now told me that after every shot, literally they would have to take a break. So even the same shot had to be done four times. They would have to take a break. He would have to sit down, relax. They were getting him special organic food being flown in from London. Um, he didn't like the hotel where he was staying. It was very noisy. So they put him up in a homestay with some family or something because he wanted a quiet yeah. home atmosphere. Um, but his heart was in it. He wanted to come back to acting because, you know, um, and I think he's the best thing about the film. The film didn't work actually for me, but he's, he's a total delight in that film. Yes, yes, Asim. And the way you end your book with such a poetic image of Rumi's book, Upturned, lying on his bed, and this poem about life and death. Um, See, you know, I, friends. I, yes, Asim. When, you know, when I was, how do you end a book? This, I mean, I, I finished the book sometimes in October, November of 2000. No, no, before November, because the book came out in January. So September, October, I had finished the book. You know, it's like, how do you end the book where you know that the person is not well, but you hope the person is going to get better. And you want to give a positive feel to the thing because the reader is also reading it. I mean, I, we had no idea he would be gone so soon. Yes. I mean, we had we had all hoped that he would continue and he would get better and maybe it'll take him a little longer or whatever it was, you know, to recuperate or whatever. But it happened so suddenly, um, you know, so I, and you know, the, in my conversation, my editor, we went back and forth and I found that poem by Rumi because mm -hmm. Vipin Sharma had told me that Vipin Sharma had gone to his the hospital room mm -hmm. and the, in the bed, on the bed, there was this book, book by Rumi, uh, it was just lying there and Irfan had gone with Sutapa to, uh, to a coffee shop. Um, mm. And I then imagined that maybe that was one of the poems he was reading. Yes, yes, that's beautiful. And you know, Asim, ironically, we were all relieved that uh, Irfan's mother left the world just four days before the great actor took his final exit. Otherwise, I think uh, Saida Begum would have Challenge the gods the way she confronted Meera Nair and <laughs> would have said, Bula usko bula. Usko mera hi beta mila tha marne ko. Marne ke liye. So, ye mujhe lagta hai ki agar, agar kahi Saida Begum jo 90 plus thi, Irfan ki maa, wo agar hoti aur teen din pehle nahi chali gai hoti, to unhone to khuda ko bhi jo hai, wo challenge kar diya hota. Ji. Uh, Asim, uh, we both agree that uh, Irfan had a catalogue of wonderful positive qualities as an actor. What about few shortcomings? Is it true that despite his great success both in US and the British cinema, some people question his accent in English? Yeah, so um, even though you know his parents sent him to a convent school for some time, hmm. clearly from his accent, I mean, you know, if you speak to him in English and you, you will hear him speaking, you could tell that he was not that fluent in English. I mean, you know, one, can't, one shouldn't judge because, you know, people have different life experiences and, you know, where you were born or something like that. And yet, despite that, he got amazing work outside. I mean, one of the, the toughest scenes in Life of Pi is that speech he gives towards oh, the yes. end. Yes. Where his character was supposed to have because he had grown up in Montreal. So it was not just a Canadian accent, but it was supposed to be a French Canadian accent. And, you know, he did not succeed that well. In fact, Nasiruddin Shah even said, Nasiruddin Shah told, Sach holta, wohi bolenge. He said, Menin ko usko keh diya. Mujhe bilko pasa nahi hai. Uska, uska, wo English nahi bol sakta. But phir bhi English, jo bhi boli, but jo emotions jo the, that come across no matter what kind of English he's speaking. So, while that was a sort of a, you know, handicap for him slightly. Namesake is all in English and, you know, he's speaking English in a bit of Bengali accent. So he accent, could, yes. But he was able to overcome that hurdle yeah. with his fine performance. That's, you're, you're absolutely right. What about his languid pace? What you call the meditative performances? Uske bare mein bhi kuch, uh, criticism hai, kuch, kuch hai. Uh, I think that's uh, again a very very fine quality in a man 
very very fine quality in a man and basically you know i've heard that he used to chat a lot and talk to people and discuss philosophy and life and books were bahut padhte the um but the character would demand him to be that you know uh, there is you know we 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 talked about um, uh, slum dog millionaire we talked about the other film uh, a mighty heart there are some scenes in which he's so ferocious and scary oh, yes. angry you know even in talwar there's some very violent scenes when oh, he's yes, yes, yes. investigating uh, the murder oh, yeah. and yet there is this quiet gentleness in him as we see in lunchbox um there's another kind of a gentleness sort of this angry gentleness in him in makbool for instance you know when he, the jealousy that he shows uh when he you know keeps thinking that you know tabu's character is, is with her husband um what a fine actor he was what a fine actor yes yes um uh, as you i'm sure writing this book was not a easy task because the subject of the book he was there but was not available to talk to you for some reasons for the health reasons and maybe for some other reasons so you had to interview so many people and take so many secondary sources archival materials interviews and things so it must have been a, a, a big task uh, in a way a great challenge for you yeah but i i uh, that task you know once i i will now that i've done three books i realized what is it about writing a book that excites me the most you know when when you when you're a writer you know you're you're doing it all by yourself alone when you're writing when you're researching when you're watching the film so when i watch something like lunchbox or you know passing tomorrow for the six seven time i'm now reading irfan's character in it all by myself hmm. or um uh, interviewing so who were close to irfan had worked with them to be able to talk to them to be able to get the insight from them hmm. um i love that 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 experience um you know ab kitab aayegi dekhenge kaisi hogi wo sab to hai but you know the the process is something while it's challenging it's also very exciting it's something i enjoy also i think the the so called um, authorized biographies can sometimes become very very hagiographic Yes. So then you cannot say. I mean, I know some great people. I wouldn't like to name them on the show. Uh, in this conversation, that when you write this official biography of certain diva or a certain singer or certain things, then you, even if you know about the story, no, you can't tell the story. You can't name this name. Yes. You can't do this. You can't. Yes. So there is a too many yes. can'ts which go with that. So in a way, that gives you freedom. And for me, your book is a beautiful patchwork quilt. right made with small pieces of cloth that you found yet it is stitched in such an interesting way that it becomes a gorgeous collage thank you and then um, friends i think pulitzer prize nominee has summarized what we all feel about irfan khan when he said i always wanted to write for an actor who had a sense of humor and great depth at the same time and i truly think that irfan is one of the greatest actors alive i really wish his last word also somehow becomes true my heart goes out to irfan's wife my friend and wonderful writer shutaba sikdar and their two young sons babel and ayan and i pray that they get strength to somehow fill the vacuum left behind by their in their life by a complete man actor irfan khan uh, thank you very much asim ji thank you thank you uh, very such a pleasure talking to you and for 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 this wonderful book and this wonderful chat that you had about this this frank conversation that you had with us and thank you city book leaders and thank you mohit ji uh, for giving me this opportunity to have this conversation about uh, my junior who really became my senior in many ways and to and whom i'm going to miss for a long time to come um thank you mohit ji thank you, thank you thank very you much Adama, uh, and uh, special thanks to rupa special thanks to rupa publications for bringing out such a lovely book and to asim ji when i first read this book uh, i do recall um, the chandrakanta uh, the play that he used the the show that he used to come and he played um the life of an ayar and used to copy him a lot I and was the only time he plays a double role by the way yeah. <laughs> yes yeah. yeah it was a fantastic show 
Yes. And to everyone who could participate in today, um, though the lockdown is over, a lot of people have started going to offices, um, but a lot of people from their home could join in today. Um, in case we have some time to from both of you, can we take a few questions in case? Definitely, we, we have exceeded five, just, just five minutes. How do you yeah. one hour slot? So we, so. we have a question from uh, Mr. Sunya, uh, Surya Mohan Kulshreshth ji. Yes. And uh, we can open his mic uh, and he can ask the question directly to you. Yes, please. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Surya Mohan ji, you can Surya please ask me. mic, khol lije, please. Surmanji, aapka mic bande khol lije. Asim, let me also introduce Surmanji. Surmanji is a wonderful theatre director, one of the best from uh, UP and uh, a national award winner theatre director. And uh, uh, the film Bypass was made by Amit Kumar, who happens to be his uh, nephew. Nephew, yes. I think you, you told me that. I, I told you about him. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. I, I have acted, 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 acted in that film Bypass also. I have acted in that. He was also. I acted that. Dhabe wala is Bypass. Yes, Surman. I told him that. Surman, you have a question. Yes, the question is that one play that Irfan had done in the beginning of the day. Yes. Lal Ghaas Par Neelay Ghode. Yes. Yes. Which was directed by Prasanna. And without the Dadi of Lenin, this is a very... ये बहुत ही ग्रेट एक्टर ही कर सकता है इसके बारे में आपने अपनी किताब में जरूर लिखा होगा तो इसके बारे में अगर कुछ आप दोनों लोगों में कुछ बता सकें उस प्ले के बारे में बिना दाढ़ी के लेनिन को करना कल्पना नहीं की जा सकती उसके बाद यूं इतना जबरदस्त रोल प्ले मैंने देखा तो नहीं है अनफॉर्च्युनेटली that um, how can you become somebody like that? How can you play that role? And he said, I was in my 20s when I played Lenin and I don't look anything like Lenin. I could do that. Um, and I, it's, I believe it is... Makeup was not in the makeup. Makeup was not in the makeup. It was not in the makeup. It was not in the makeup. Tell me. And Surban Ji, I have mentioned that if you have joined the first time, that the relationship with the Prasanna was made of the relationship with the Prasanna, वो जस्ट क्राफ्ट के बारे में नहीं थी बल्कि एक मॉरल कंपस प्रसन्ना थे उसकी लाइफ में और वो इसलिए भी थी कि वो एक पॉलिटिकल प्ले था वो इसलिए भी थी कि जिस तरह से प्रसन्ना ने उसको लेनिन बना दिया कि लेनिन बनने के लिए आपको लेनिन की दाढ़ी बन होना या लेनिन की तरह कद में छोटा होना या लेनिन की तरह बूढ़ा होना और गंजा होना वो जरूरी नहीं है लेनिन बनने के लिए शायद उसकी इनर क्वालिटीज और उसके अंदर की अंडरस्टैंडिंग ज्यादा जरूरी है ये जो पूरी चीज जो प्रसन्ना से उसने पाई थी इसीलिए शायद सारे अपने टीचर्स में से प्रसन्ना के साथ जो उसका रिश्ता था वो इतना प्रगाह रहा है अंत तक हाँ बिल्कुल 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 आई एग्री विद और ये चीज उसके साथ लाइफ लॉन्ग कंटिन्यूअरिंग के कैरेक्टर को इनर से अंदर से फील करना अंदर से कैरेक्टर Truly a pleasure. In case we are going to listen to the session and we have any other questions, we would be happy to take up that question. Please. Utkarsh ji, if you have any questions. Utkarsh ji, you are going to open your mic, please. Utkarsh ji, open your mic, please. और उसके बाद अशोक दुआ जी नो आई आई डोंट हैव अ क्वेश्चन इट्स जस्ट दैट दिस वाज अ वंडरफुल डिस्कशन आई मीन आई आई एम फार फ्रॉम द फिल्म इंडस्ट्री बट देवर वाज सो मेनी थिंग्स एंड सो मेनी नगेट्स एंड सो मेनी बिट्स ऑफ इनफॉरमेशन दैट आई गोट सो थैंक यू वेरी मच मिस्टर चाब्रा फॉर राइटिंग अ Atulji and Mohitji, thank you very much for organizing this. Our film is not far away from the place. Now, in the case of Hali Filal, the series has come from the place. You have got a lot of credit for that. Maybe Betal, not Patal. Yeah, Betal. So sorry. Yes. Betal. So, our film is not far away from the place. Asim, let me introduce Utkarsh Ji. Utkarsh Ji, 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 Utkarsh Ji,
about mythology, Indian mythology, Western mythology, and the world mythology, and, and is a wonderful interpreter of mythology and mythological stories. Uh, <laughs> Honored. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure here. My pleasure too. Thank you. Can we open Mr. Ashok Duwa's mic? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Duwa. जब तक अशोक दुआ जी आते हैं मैं इनका परिचय दे देता हूँ एक जलवायु कम्युनिटी सेंटर है नोएडा से ही असीम जी ऑल आर्मी वेटरन्स ऑल डिफेंस वेटरन्स लिव देयर एंड ऑल रिटायर्ड बट दे आर वेरी हैप्पी दे आर वेरी लाइवली दे आर वेरी जॉयस दे कॉल इट द जेवीसीसी रीड एंड ग्रो क्लब क्लोज टू सेक्टर नाइंटी थ्र Yeah. Great. So sometimes you you must come to Sector Twenty One and be with us. I would love to, sir. I would love to. <laughs> uh, uh, you you uh, spoke about uh, uh, Irfan Khan so well that you must have done. It must have been some experience for you to traverse his journey. My question is, while writing this book, you must have come across uh, very finer points of Irfan Khan. He was a versatile actor. His eyes spoke, uh, you know, the depth of his soul. My question is, what is the one quality that you like most in Irfan Khan? So, one quality of Irfan, you know, he would say that was a drawback, something I did not know about. You know, Irfan has often said about how shy he was. Wow, um, and he especially. felt uh, especially he was very shy when he initially came to national school drama because he was coming from jaipur which is not a small town but his exposure to life uh, you know he had classmates who were from delhi including uh, shutapa uh, meeta vashish had come from chandigarh you know they had read books they had seen kind of films etc so irfan sort of felt he had a sort of drawback that was holding him back but i think he he has always often talked about how he was shy in any case and i think and he says that that's why he became an actor because when you are very shy you really the only way you can overcome that shyness is to become somebody else you know in front of the camera and in the, when you in the shot you're giving or series of shots you're giving or when you're acting in plays for instance um that you you forget your drawback because you are no longer that he's no longer irfan khan he is the character he's playing and i think that's that that's a rather interesting part of his personality that i did not know about um that irfan would become pan singh tomar irfan would become sajan fernandez of lunchbox or or ashim uh, ashok ganguly um and so you forget the irfan khan who came from jaipur and talk um and he wanted that life because of the fact not just for fame not for money all of that came his way but i think to also it was always a cathartic experience for him for his life so i think that was uh, to me that was very very interesting I, i i discovered more and more of that while i was so sort of researching for the book i think that speaks about the versatility of this actor who being a shy person could overcome that when he is uh, uh, giving a shot right that's excellent I right think. thank you sir Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Ashok. We have next Thank question from Preeti, and we'll take this as the last question, and then we'll call off the evening. Preeti, your mic is on. You can please ask a question. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it was wonderful to listen to the stories. Hello, Tulji. So nice Thank to you. meet you again. Thank you, Preeti. Uh, I, I'm hoping I can catch all of the books soon. Uh, my question is, as a biographer, uh, which phase of Irfan's life was your favorite? So you know that's a very difficult question to answer. Um, the only way I can think of it is that at the time period when some of my favorite films he did one one after another. You know when he did uh, the namesake and then he did a mighty heart and then so say from like two thousand and six two thousand and seven up to about two thousand and thirteen, by yeah. which time he had done Lunchbox and he had done Life of Pi, yeah. and he had. Uh, 
that was a, that, that was and you know slum dog it was also creatively his, his his the best phase although i think he was very good in pico also and then he started doing these comedies later uh, i i to me that was his really uh, creatively uh, he was really uh, enjoying that moment of being an actor and being challenged and becoming completely a different person and you can see that in the series of films that i mentioned yes 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 that's so wonderful to hear i think yeah, it's my personal favorite of movie list as well so thank you so much for sharing thank that you. you know thank you me. have um, asim ji you have uh, interviewed so many of my friends whether it's meeta vashesh whether it's tikmanshu dhulia whether it's uh, vipin sharma who was my classmate at the national school of drama or varun and uh, varun was what what purohit and pandit were in the film for uh, the the suits airs for irfan and varun was the first one who told him in jaipur that you are going to become a star and in the end also i i had a chat with varun one day after irfan's departure and he was saying that i was reading and and i i somehow thought that if we could uh, see through this august then everything will be all right but that was not to be so what to do we'll now take, i can see anak benerji on screen yeah, we will take one more question anak had raised his hand so anak you may please ask your question hello thank you so much thank you so much asim ji thank you so much atul ji and uh, mohit ji uh, i want to ask uh, if uh, during your research you came across because we don't know so much of uh, irfan's uh, personal life but uh, if you could throw some light on the kind of influences he had outside of cinema or the kind of uh, hobbies or interests he had that may have uh, uh, influenced his work or something that he uh, got inspiration from outside of cinema so you know the, the, what i've been able to read i mean you know some of his <clears throat> influences came from family members especially the women in his life is his his nani and his mother um, were very strong influences on him um you know why you say outside cinema but in the world of cinema also some people had a lot of lot of influence in uh, uh, manchu dulia tishu became his very very close friend at national school drama but although tik manchu was a few years junior to him is tik manchu who, who sort of opened up irfan's world where irfan started watching hollywood films with al pacino and robert de niro and reading the kind of books that other classmates of his were already had already read um again in the film industry itself uh, we briefly talked about uh, mahesh but mahesh but became a very good friend of irfan towards the late 1990s and a guide to him as such i mean you know mahesh but uh, we can all agree that they were not the best films he's made and including the ones irfan acted in also but as a life uh, coach also to get irfan irfan sort of understood it it was easier for him to understand how to act in a film like hasil or how to act in a film like um, makbool for instance but when he had to do like broader bollywood films uh, rogue is a good example didn't work at all but other mainstream bollywood films he did i think he learned a lot from uh, mahesh bhat who told him that you know you're playing to a larger audience and what you have to do in fact there's a very uh, interesting conversation they had when mahesh bhat said to him gandhi acting kara karo gandhi acting kara karo and explained to him ki gandhi acting ka matlab kya hota hai you know you're basically acting for for the, the front benches in movie theaters also um but over the years other people vishal bhadwaj was a big influence on him because vishal they became very good friends and vishal bhadwaj then gave him such fine perform roles to do and irfan agreed to for two of vishal bhadwaj's films saath khun maaf as well as haider irfan agreed to do very very small supporting roles because he he didn't think in terms of like how big the role should be or should i be the lead actor you know the, the fact was that it was a very meaty role it was a very important role and that's what um, irfan enjoyed the most so over the years all of these people had because his wife had a big part of influence on him so yeah also asim ji i would like to add just add two things for anag that um, the indoors if um, irfan was a quiet man sitting in a party in a corner and things like that not speaking too much etc but essentially he was an outdoor man and that perhaps came from his father being a shikari and who loved shikars and he went outdoors and also the kite flying 
Yes. The kite flying was such a big influence of him where he kind of connected with something up there in the sky and he could be lost in flying a kite, including yeah. in between the shots he used to go out and fly kites wow. and, and, and be in the sky somewhere. And um, uh, Asimji, though we have not planted these people, they have all come by, by their own, but let me introduce you, Anak <laughs> Banerjee, who is your fellow New Yorker. He studies in New York. He is a painter, an artist, a singer and a footballer. Ah, so, thank you. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you so Anak. much, Asimji. Thank you so much, Atunji. Truly thank a pleasure. You. Thank you, Anak. With thank this, you. I think uh, uh, we'll call off this lovely evening, lovely discussions. And no more of Irfan rather than only watching his movies. And from now on, whenever we'll watch his movies, he'll give us a completely new perspective, new dimension to what we'll watch. And that's what books do to us till the time we tune in to some more interesting conversations. Thank you, Asimji. Thank you, Atulji. And to everyone, thank you, Ridhima, managing the entire backend and to Rupa Publications. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. See you soon. Thank you, Thanks.